Okay, everyone, thank you so much for coming to the Cloud Native WASM Day. I'm gonna wrap us up with some quick closing remarks and like two calls to action. Uh, first, a gigantic thank you to our entire program committee. Uh, Ralph Squills from Microsoft, Kevin Hoffman from Capital One, Colin Eberhardt from Scott Logic, Chris A from CNCF, Till from Fastly and the Bytecode Alliance, Jonathan Berry from Goliath, uh, Edith Levine from Solo, Ming Kyu Sung from Intel, and above all else, Elna Vogel from CNCF, without whose work today would not have been possible at all. A second huge thanks to our sponsors, our two diamond sponsors, Cosmonic and Tetra, our gold sponsor, Microsoft Azure, and our community sponsor, the Bytecode Alliance. Make sure you take a few minutes and check out Bytecode Alliance for more information about some of the things that are going on in the community today. Now, if anything was clear today, it's clear that WebAssembly is in cloud native. We see WebAssembly running on top of uh, cloud native apps. We see WebAssembly running inside of Web, uh, cloud native apps. And we see WebAssembly running all around uh, cloud native apps. As we think about um, the huge variety of things that we saw uh, presented today, you know, there's this one thing that should just be absolutely clear. And it's something that I'm completely convinced about. And it's that, you know, WebAssembly isn't just another evolution in technology. It is simply the next revolution in technology. And we started out today with an uh, opening remarks from Ralph and Chris, uh, who did a great job uh, introducing us to uh, what we were going to go through this morning. Uh, and I would like to point out that today's session included people from countries and cultures uh, and communities all around the world. I know that I logged in at 3 a.m. and there were others that were logging in in their afternoon or in their evening. This is really a global movement here. Uh, next, we had a wonderful keynote from Lynn Clark, who not only laid out the importance of a uh, some operating system interfaces, uh, type interfaces uh, that we need in order to help continue to move this revolution forward, but also laid the future vision for where we're going to be heading next with interface types and some of the other proposals that are being developed in an open and common way. Uh, Kevin Hoffman from Capital One talked a little bit about Wasm Cloud uh, uh, and taking uh, his napkin sketches in his uh, distributed application runtime. Uh, then we had uh, Michael uh, Wan talk about uh, AI inference on the edge uh, and talked about some of the incredible performance benefits we're seeing by embedding and running WebAssembly uh, and combining it with the latest in TensorFlow and artificial intelligence uh, in the browser and on the server side. Uh, Matt and Taylor may have done what is my uh, maybe my most favorite themed uh, presentation today uh, in their WASM in the Wild Wild West, where they did a wonderful job providing not only an overview of some of the great work that's coming out of the open source group at Microsoft Azure, uh, but also uh, laid out some of the major challenges that we have in our ecosystem, some of the major opportunities we have to come together as a community. Uh, uh, then we had a wonderful uh, sponsored keynote from uh, uh, Takaya, who talked about secure extensibility by WebAssembly. And I really love the language that they chose to use to bring today around secure and extendable uh, and being embedded. Uh, it was a really well done presentation. I think they are really showing us um, uh, some new opportunities for how we can use uh, the technology. Uh, uh, then we had Michael Wan back again uh, with Wasm as a serverless runtime, uh, where uh, uh, he presented some of the incredible performance benefits uh, that are that are possible and some of the research that Second State has been leading in the area of um, uh, comparing runtime performance, startup times, uh, and so forth. As much as I don't like the verse language, I really appreciate um, the the real technical articulation of the benefits and the pros and cons that we have um, on the technology. Uh, uh, then we had our lightning talks and we started with uh, Corentin talking about migrating from uh, JavaScript uh, to WebAssembly. Uh, then we had a great talk from Connor Hicks who talked about Atmo and his SUFA design pattern and building web services with Wasm. Uh, then we had uh, the ByteAssembly Wammer presentation, which is the WebAssembly micro runtime. And I love that we've seen you know, uh, people talking about uh, use cases on the biggest of hardware. Uh, later uh, uh, in, in today, we had Andrew Brown and Ming Kyu uh, from Intel talking about um, uh, you know, leveraging this technology on Big Iron. Uh, and here we have it running on the smallest, uh, which I think really plays to the diverse, uh, you know, how diverse and what a real revolution this technology is. 
Uh, then we had Matt Taylor, uh, Matt Taylor, Matt Butcher, and Taylor Thomas uh, back again to talk about Bindle, uh, which is uh, sort of a rethink about how we might package our applications and distribute them uh, uh, for next generation applications. Uh, then we had Robert talking about serverless WASM for compute intensive workloads. Uh, and he was doing some demos um, around uh, how you could leverage WASM to get these uh, performance routines. And I think also did a really great job talking about how some of we how some of the new edge related companies are leveraging WebAssembly and how that might come into play in a, in a truly cloud native world. Uh, then Andrew Brown and Minkyu-san uh, with their machine learning uh, with WASNN, which is actually already committed uh, as an optional plugin in the WASM time uh, uh, host runtime uh, that's available from uh, Fastly and the Bytecode Alliance. Uh, so uh, this is something that you can go out and play with uh, today. Uh, then I did a quick overview around why I really believe that WebAssembly is the future of distributed computing. Uh, and I tried to lay out uh, some of the uh, what does this really mean for us as a community? And really tried to reach out to a diverse uh, a group of uh, audience and speakers there. Uh, finally, uh, we closed up with a really well put together presentation from Shane and Yuval around uh, WASM filters for Envoy, which was another great talk that really emphasized the embeddability and the pluggability of WebAssembly uh, as, a, as a technology. And I think today uh, in being on the program committee, one of the things that we really tried to do in putting today's content together was not really just was not just focus on the intersection of WebAssembly and cloud native, but try to focus on a broad range of technologies that exist across today's landscape, because it is clear that WebAssembly is running on in and around cloud native applications today, uh, and there should be a place for it. When we think about what's next in the short term, I think you could throw out a lot of different answers to this. You could talk about the technical roadmap, you could talk about the innovations, you can talk about the places that we're going to use that. But I really think that there's only one right answer to that question, and that is that community is next. Because when we think about what we really need to be successful as a group, it's not just pulling together brilliant ideas and roadmaps and plans forward. We really need to uh, make sure that we're building the content, the solutions, the comparisons, the white papers to arm not only engineers, uh, but managers and marketing and sales and customer success and all of the other orgs that are going to come into a successful transition and adoption of, the next, uh, of this next revolution in technology. As for what is immediately next, I would love to make sure and do a call out that there's actually one more activity today sponsored by Microsoft Azure, uh, the birds of a feather session for a cloud native WebAssembly landscape with Ralph uh, Squillis, uh, where we're gonna try to sit down and chat through what might a WebAssembly landscape uh, look like? What would be the sort of key areas? Today alone, we saw a number of themes. We saw a couple of, we saw a number of host runtimes mentioned. We saw a number of application runtimes mentioned. We saw multiple approaches to machine learning. We saw uh, multiple orgs talking about embedding WebAssembly. What are the sort of characteristics of these things? And we'll maybe try to take a first rough pass at sketching that out. You know, regardless of what you feel is next, and I, I know there's always the tendency to pit applications and uh, transitions um, off of each other to talk about why things are better. The one thing that really resonated with me today is this, that today we're in this great situation where we find that cloud native and WebAssembly are both working well together. And I think that would be the theme and the uh, overarching message that I would love for everybody to really embrace as we think through the next year and the next few years of WebAssembly as a community is, is that while WebAssembly as a technology may not be dependent upon, it is certainly compatible with the things that we're doing in, in the cloud native world. And it opens up new possibilities for what it even means to be cloud native. So thank you very much for your time. I really look forward to you joining us uh, at the uh, Birds of a Feather session sponsored by Microsoft Azure. And I uh, just wanna say thank you to all the attendees because really at the end of the day, it's going to be as a community that we're successful. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.